So we can start. I will yeah. just do the last microphone test. Perfect. So, cheers. Cheers, Link. Cheers. So, hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube show Transu, which I normally do in Czech language, but this time I do it in English for the second time actually. My name is Lenka and uh, I invite trans people to my YouTube show to talk about their lives. And uh, I have a wonderful guest here today, Magda, who is from Poland. She is a Polish trans activist. Hi. Hi Lenka, thanks for having me. Yeah, my name is Magda and I'm happy to talk with you. I'm, I'm super excited. So, uh, in my YouTube show, we always start uh, talking about life because uh, <clears throat> I don't know how it's in other countries, but in Czechia, whenever the media speak about trans people, it's always about surgery, surgeries, hormones, hormones, bodies. It's all about uh, these things. Mm. And uh, I'm trying to show to the public that we are people just like everyone else. Mm -hmm. So, Magda, what do you do in life? So, um, I'm helping companies to create a trans-inclusive workplace. My background is I have been a recruiter for 10 years. For 10 years? Yeah, five years in IT and startups. But when I started my transition, I realized that I would like to do something more impactful for the queer community. And as you said, the person from Poland, I felt like we still have a lot to do in, in my country or, or over the world. So, um, yeah, I, I started to share the story of my transition and helping companies create a safe space for trans people, but in general for queer people. So you are self-employed at the moment? Yeah, I am. And companies hire you to like do speeches and to train them and advise? Yeah, exactly. So d different things. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I I'm just uh, um, find out that I would like to um, connect my life experience as a transgender person and ex-gay person. And... Uh, <laughs> ex-gay <my> person, <laughs> 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 sounds funny. <laughs> and my um, HR expertise. And uh, yeah, I really love to do it. And I started to help companies in Poland. But last year I, I went to Germany, Netherlands. Right now I'm in Czech Republic or in Czechia, how you say it? The both is correct. Yeah. Both is correct. Czechia is like a little bit newer term yeah. that was invented yeah. or yeah. coined for the reason that Czech Republic is too long for some yeah. people to say. Yeah. So Czechia is shorter yeah. and I like it more. Yeah. Mm. Oh, so Czech people don't, you know, like 99% of Czech people hate the word Czechia and yeah. I'm, I just love it. So yeah. Yeah. I'm a bit different. So, um, so you came here actually for uh, Pride Business Forum Voices that exactly. I'm hosting, which yeah. is happening tomorrow. Yeah. And you just arrived and we are like <laughs> doing this uh, YouTube show like yeah. uh, late night before, <laughs> before the... the the forum voices tomorrow yeah. and actually I must admit that um, my team in the company yeah. that I work for has a company dinner tonight. Mm -hmm. mm. like, I appreciate it. Like, and <laughs> I just cancelled it because of this, yeah. because we have no other date to I really it. appreciate it. So um, uh, where in Poland do you live? Literally, I'm living next to Krakow in a village, mm -hmm. but I'm saying to people that I'm living in Krakow, but... but I'm asking for the yeah. reason if maybe there is someone, yeah. like f maybe some managers yeah. from some Polish companies yeah. that would like to hire you. Yeah. Uh, can they be like from anywhere in Poland or in a, in a particular re region? Yeah, so um, I... I'm not sure the hire is the, the right w word. I think it's more like consulting. Um, well, I mean, hire for consulting. Yeah, 
Okay. So, yeah. Not yeah. not like higher for like yeah. employment, but yeah, yeah, that's what I. That's believe. the thing. I I'm not looking for permanent role in the company because I realized that being self-employed is is it something what's giving me a lot of uh, fun, a lot of possibilities. But uh, according to your question, uh, yeah, I'm working with uh, people uh, all over the world. Uh, literally the next week I'm going to Berlin. So um, yeah, the company um, can be anywhere and I'm working online and offline. I, I really like offline, but many companies, uh, they decided before COVID, COVID or during COVID that they will work remotely and they just want to have like webinar online. That's fine with me. So both, uh, I'm flexible. Mm -hmm. So both, um, they're okay with me, but I really like contact face to face and you know, I saw Lenka on Instagram and on the YouTube channel and right now we are sitting <laughs> next to each other. So it's good to... And I'm actually doing yeah. the same what you do, but uh, as a hobby. Or not as a hobby, yeah. I get paid for it, obviously. Yeah. But uh, um, my j I have a job. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a software engineer. Yeah. But I also go to other companies yeah. to give them lectures and, and mm -hmm. advice about how to treat yeah. trends. Uh, employees yeah. and um, trans customers yeah amazing but i have to take vacation you know yeah. some people go to <laughs> yeah. they go somewhere nice to yeah. uh, you know to a beach yeah. and i don't go to a beach yeah. or i just go to other companies to, yeah. get, to give lectures whenever i take vacation yeah. so i take many days off and so yeah. far my employer is kind of um, yeah. how to say um, they are okay with it yeah it's good um, and it's interesting because like you, you, you turned it into a job because yeah. normally, you know, what I want to show here is that uh, trans people have like yeah. jobs and that you don't have to t like talk yeah. about the trans issues with them all the time, yeah. but you are kind of an exception because you turned your, like your transness yeah. into, into a job. Yeah, that's true. And I'm working uh, with my business mentor. I, I don't know how deep you want to go uh, with that story but uh, yeah I think as you said like uh, it's a job as well because um, sometimes I I'm hearing that people are saying like mm, it's my it's my um, journey and depends as I said I'm mixing here my life but HR ex expertise so companies they are very interested because um, I can see the whole process. Um, so, and that topic, it's, it's quite new for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's, it's about awareness. It's about, uh, yeah, helping them. Mm -hmm. And um, we are now here in Transu, so we all yeah. like done yeah. the page yeah. right now. And when was it that you started f to feel that something's a little bit different mm. from maybe like kids of your age back then? Mm. And before you start, I'll just move my arm ah. move my microphone a bit. Yeah, I think, Do you think this will be better. Do you think mine is good? Yours is, yours is good. Okay. So when was it? How, how did it start? Um... I don't remember exactly one point, but I have been a cross-dresser for eight years and I started it in Poland and my mo motivation was to have sex with the guys. Mostly I've, I've met the guys who say uh, or identify as a straight. Mm -hmm. And I found out uh, by cross-dressing that's something different inside me so you f first of all you were gay like I, I i think i thought and it was a framework that i could use because i was mm -hmm. born as yeah, a person sure, sure. With but, a penis. Uh, you lived as a you lived as a gay but uh, you were attracted to hetero men it never worked out with gay men to mm -hmm. be honest Three because really they perceived you as a guy back then um 
Probably, but uh, maybe not right people as well. And I was immature. I was around 20, so, mm -hmm. or maybe more than 20. <laughs> uh, but uh, I always felt like I'm interested uh, with the straight guys. Um, maybe it was because, one reason it could be because as a trans woman, I would like to be called by everyone as a woman. Mm -hmm. So if they say like they're straight, they're, they are into women. So automatically I like it. So you started cross-dressing mm -hmm. for this reason? Yeah. And you started cross-dressing in private or you were walking on the street in Poland or? Yeah, I would let you know. Can I drink? Sure, you can okay. drink anytime. <laughs> yeah. This is like, this is why it's here. If class is supporter, okay. so just go ahead. Mm. Yeah, for a few years, um, maybe around five, I was meeting in my apartment. And uh, I think it's the right moment to say it was very um, dangerous for me because I was meeting uh, a lot of guys. So you were cross-dressing at home? Yeah. Not in the public and you were inviting guys yeah, to visit sex. you for sex? Yeah, and uh, sometimes the guys convinced me to have sex without condoms. So it was a lot of risk. And yeah, I, I think it's, it's super important to talk about it because I was lucky to didn't catch anything like very serious. I'm just talking about disease, mm -hmm. uh, but still like HIV and prevention, it's, it's, a, it's a taboo in Poland. It's a taboo. I don't know how it works here, but still like it's a taboo. Mm -hmm. But here we talk about in Czechia, we talk about I think like, I mean, I mean in media and mm. in general public, we talk about mm. um, sexual uh, mm. diseases. So mm. I think we are a little bit further from Poland. We are not, uh, we are not a Catholic country. Mm -hmm. We are like, actually, we are the most atheist country in the world. Mm -hmm. So some things are different in here. Yeah. And uh, so th this was going on for some time. Mm -hmm. So you, you were like cross-dressing at home for, yeah. like, f for these reasons? Yeah. Then in Poland, occasionally, uh, but I was scared, like, um, I went few times, twice, three times to, to the club, to LGBT club, but still, um, you know, was looking around if I'm safe, and yeah, it was a lot of risk because I went there alone and um, yeah, um, it was a lot of fear. Um, should I continue what happened mm -hmm. <laughs> later sure. on? Cool. So um, I decided because I, I always wanted to live abroad. So I dared to go to London and I've uh, lived there for a year and a half. And there I... Um, so that, that, that the situation is completely different. Like when you, when you walk yeah. on a street in Soho, it's hard to say, it's hard to see a straight couple, right? It's like, you know, you see so many guys holding hands and... Yeah, Soho is one thing, but there is a lot of clubs for cross-dressers and uh, transgender women. And I started to go to those clubs, of course, mostly... And the, the places that I'm talking, they are um, sex parties. But uh, it was eye-opening moment for me and it changed. So th th that was a place where you could finally be yourself. Yeah. So that, that opened your eyes. Yeah. And as a person from Poland without a role model of being a transgender, I, um, I've met a Sophie. Uh, she was around 50 -ish, and she she was um, a role model for me, the first role model and she was super open about her transition and that meeting inspired me and I... You met her in London? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she was from there? Uh, I mean, we didn't talk like... Uh, she was from the UK, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, yeah. I mean, she was not Polish, that's no, what I, no, no, that's no, what no, I no. wanted to ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So you met well, her? When I'm going abroad, I'm not looking for Polish people mostly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just, yeah, I was <laughs> yeah. just curious. Yeah, sure. Because, uh, yeah, in London there are many Polish people, actually. That's it's true. like hard to yeah. not to meet Polish people. Yeah. It's like... That's true. But do you know, the funny fact was, I said to people that I'm from Czechia. Can you, you imagine? Did. It? Oh, <laughs> yeah. So you were lying. Yeah, I, I was lying uh, and I was still scared in London t- that someone, you know, will recognize me and I will have some consequences. Back you know? home. Yeah, I mean like... And you went to London for study or for no, work? No, um, for work I was a freelancer. But um, I didn't work there a lot. It was more mostly time for myself to party, to to find myself. To enjoy life. Exactly. And I had that opportunity. And it it changed my life because I uh, had a thought you could be a transgender person. And I don't know that I should say right now what's happened yeah. Just go ahead, <laughs> yeah. just like, you know, I, I'll, I'll just maybe interrupt you from time to time yeah. with some questions, but if mm. just, yeah, just continue. So, um, I, I came back to Poland and I started my transition, of course, it was like diagnosis process, like probably... So over. that was how, so you were in London, you mm-hmm. found out your identity, you realized who you are and that you need to go to transition. That was thanks to like the nightlife in London. I believe that uh, I have to do, I believe that I have to do my transition legal, legally in the country where I was born. But I was in Sri Lanka that I'm transgender. I had a thought I could be and mm-hmm. I had a lot of questions. But I decided to to come back and I started my process. And one thing what I've learned from my perspective is transition is a diagnostic process. So, you know, you start in taking hormones if you are decided for, for it, because some transgender people are not decided for it. And your body will not change, you know, mm-hmm how you look like right now, how I look like. I mean, like, we didn't change in one day. Probably we wish, (laughs) but I didn't know it. I mean, like... um, You had no information. A lot of... uh, A lot of questions I had. I didn't do a lot of research. I didn't knew a lot of trans people. So... So what is the process in Poland? What type of doctors do you have to go yeah. to visit so it's not like one clear path but in my case it was like i just started with a sexologist um and he had another um faculty i think we can say in english so he um that person is um as a main doctor, it could be main doctor for transition. Mm-hmm. And I had a psychological assessment. I had to um, fill in some questionnaires. And then they, uh, of course, I had to do some medical tests like blood, uh, some rentgen. And uh, after that, um the kind of psychi- psychiatrist clinic said that I'm a trans person and I can start uh, uh, take a hormone replacement therapy. Mm-hmm. During this process, was there something that you didn't feel comfortable with? Uh, Like, I mean, Mm. in in Czechia, there is just one path. In Czechia, you have to go to sexologists. We don't have any other options. Well, we have another option, and that is to obtain hormones illegally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you want to have the hormones legally, you have to go to sexologists, and then it depends whether you, like, or whether you make an appointment with a good one or a bad one. Yeah. And if it's a bad one, they treat I've you heard. as a sex deviant and they mm. give you very like uh, stupid questions about your yeah. sex life that have nothing yeah. to do with your gender identity. 
Uh, even like the worst ones even send you to a device called batismograph where mm -hmm. they like attach some electrodes to your body and mm -hmm. then they show you some disturbing pictures to like measure what you get aroused to for like no reason mm -hmm. just to make like a sexological like, mm -hmm. examination or whatever or I, exp I, experiment i didn't have to go through that mm -hmm. but i still had to answer them very private questions that uh, mm -hmm. they shouldn't be asking i had yeah. to like uh, talk about my sex fantasies my yeah. sex life like into yeah. deepest details for yeah. no reason yeah. just to get hormones for my own body yeah. so i'm 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 curious mm -hmm. whether something like that happens in poland as well in my case it didn't and i like to talk about my case but mm -hmm. the stories are different from the people who transitioned and for example i've heard about one sexologist who were collecting the pictures like naked pictures and it was like a part of the process to send it that's that yeah, yeah. that happens as well yeah in our country. so i think our countries in in that fight could be similar but you personally you were lucky you didn't have to go through yeah i didn't like and um so you got the hormones eventually yeah. Yeah. how long time did it take um, i mean from the, like the first phone call mm. approximately um, like was it like few weeks few weeks yeah mm -hmm. yeah because again in czechia it's also the, the what what the problem is yeah. that it's only the sexologists yeah and therefore there are very few of them yeah. that you can yeah. uh, that you can call yeah and what about and like you sometimes yeah. you have to like wait i had to wait six months from yeah. the first phone call till the yeah. first appointment but is it like public and the whole system is, is yeah uh, in poland it's everything privately mm -hmm. i mean like i again from my experience i did it everything like privately so I paid for it and nobody cover it. Actually, uh, I cover some of the hormones that mm. I'm taking because I wanted different ones. Yeah. And uh, actually, uh, two days ago, I learned that one of the sexologists, yeah. uh, a good one actually yeah. in Czechia, started doing like one day a week uh, privately. Yeah. Uh, and I think that it's not a bad idea. I think that mm -hmm. th there should be always the more options you have, the better. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I like this like hybrid system. Mm -hmm. But up to recently, it was all just uh, public health care. Yeah. yeah. So on one hand, it was covered and it yeah. was good. But then you had to wait so long for everything. You yeah. had to wait months or even years. Yeah. Even worse situation is in the UK, but again, like I never did it transition there, but yeah. So maybe our countries, they are not the worst all over. They're not actually, as, as I said, this is the second interview I'm doing yeah. in English language. And yeah. the first one was with a girl from a post-Soviet country. She yeah. didn't want to mention the name of the of country course. for safety reason. Mm -hmm. And there you go to jail. Mm. It's not like, you know, we, we, here we are, um, yeah, I'm telling like bad things about Czechia. Of course. But yeah. she said Czechia is like a heaven on earth. It's like a paradise yeah. compared to her, her country of origin. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and when did you and how did you come out to like your family, mm. colleagues at work? How did it go? Yeah. Was it like before the hormones or after? So firstly, I came to um, France and I received from them a support, which was very important for me. And I'm not close with my family. I wasn't and I'm not right now. I I'm only close with my mother and I... <laughs> You will laugh about it. Uh, firstly, I publish it on LinkedIn and then my parents, uh, I mean, like my parents are not on LinkedIn, but it was easier for me to publish on LinkedIn than say to my parents 
but the hardest so this uh, is the first coming out i've ever heard of that was, that <laughs> happened on linkedin but I, I, i'm very um active on LinkedIn. so you are, if yeah. you are like an hr specialist so that's the yeah, that's the thing. that's your thing yeah i actually i used linkedin only when i was looking for a job so yeah. i have an account there you still didn't uh, accept my invitation yeah i didn't because i don't go there yeah i, I have like no reason i just yeah. you know i just opened my linkedin profile when i was looking for a job then i found sure. a job i got a job and then yeah. i stopped going to linkedin because yeah. like i have no reason yeah but i understand for an it's different for an hr person so yeah. that's the place you came out yeah And uh, I received a lot thousand tons of um, support, of course some. Um, and back then you were you were employed somewhere. Uh, since uh, I think two years before I was self-employed, so um, I wasn't employed at the company, so I was self-employed, and uh, yeah, the reaction was mostly good. Of course, some people say something in the comment. Oh, in the beginning, it was hard for me. I took it like, oh, maybe, maybe something is wrong. But yeah, I always had like very supportive friends, and we we've talked about it a lot. And I stopped at some point uh, to take her about those comments because they will always come mm -hmm. and i came to my mother and my sister um after a month of hormone replacement therapy and it was hard for me i mean like i had a very um hard conversation with them they used it to me all oh, this is that i can ca uh, that i can have but they don't have like any knowledge of being transgender it was like fears of them and i felt like very uncomfortable with that but uh, yeah my mother she needed a time and right now she is an ally and mm -hmm. she she supported me and yeah she supported me and i i'm really proud of her and yeah that's wonderful like yeah. what can be better than like a supportive parent yeah. and of course like for the parents for the moms and dads yeah. it, most of them need time mm -hmm. so that's normal it was the hardest to to say um, for me to to my father can i just Be yeah adjust this a bit yeah thank you like it's better right and uh, right now then <laughs> after yeah. the put the conversation like this thank you mm -hmm. um yeah because with the father i did not have like close relation so it was it was hard for me and i said it like to him literally before christmas because in poland christmas are your parents divorced or they live together they live together mm -hmm. but yeah my mother is not a person in that case that she you know uh they they are not close to so uh, probably that's the reason but it's it's their relation so yeah i came to him before the christmas that i'm not coming and <laughs> i said i'm transgender and i think he's still processing it and yeah are I you in contact um i wouldn't say like it's a contact uh, we never had a relationship and the funny fact here is he's a psychiatrist uh-huh so it's his job kind of like yeah i mean like i thought like he has so he may have like met many trans people before that that was my fault but um mm, yeah so we didn't talk about it so i think he's still processing it but i realized it's my life and i have to be happy and right now or never so yeah cool yeah and uh how was it then to like you know be trans in public yeah. in poland because yeah. here in czechia we hear like lots of crazy stories about yeah. poland how you know catholic the country yeah. is and that 
you have towns with LGBT free zones and I like was born the, in one of them. So like a very like homophobic environment. Mm-hmm. It's like almost like a hell for mm-hmm. uh, for LGBT plus people. Mm-hmm. So what was it like? Yeah, on the beginning when I was changing, I mean like when I was changing physically, uh, I had hair transplant. I had Adam's apple removal, you can see mm-hmm. <laughs> as well. Um, and uh, on the beginning, like misgendering, it was hard for me. But um, I realized, you know, how, how people can know that, you know, I'm going in that process. And uh, I choose, I, I didn't start it to use the name Magda, full name, on the beginning, the first year of my transition, I used the name Ma. It's literally two, two letters of my, uh, of, uh, my, I can say it loud. My dead name was Maciek, mm-hmm. so I keep the two letters. Mm-hmm. And then after the year, I put Gda. So Magda, it was my, you know, process of, of the name. But for many people like Ma, what is it? Is it coming from Chinese language or is it like, uh, you know, um, ID or uh, um, like nickname or w- what is it? Did you have any problems like on the street? or? Um, I didn't have like any like um, people shouting aggression. at you or aggression. Yeah. Uh, of, of course, some people laugh at me. Of, of course, um, but something yeah. did anything serious happen? Um, depends. What do you count as serious? I mean, like like if somebody really like attacked you or attacked not. So so it was but, just I mean, verbal like, verbal insults. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I mean like. At attacking it's like um, it's uh, I mean like I know of course it happened like you know some people are more murdered because they are trans right or for other reason but um, yeah I think again I am privileged here and I believe um, that I um, I'm privileged that I'm um, I had, h- how to say it, like, correctly, that um, I changed to be feminine person and living in a binary society, it's mm-hmm. super, I- super important for people. Um, sometimes people still have some confuses, I think, because of my voice, but... Uh, you know, it, it's their problem, not mine. Mm-hmm. But so, so, so you think you are doing fine things to your appearance, that you have like a binary ex- appearance? Yeah, but I did some surgeries. Uh, I, I didn't have like facial uh, feminization surgery. You did or you didn't? I didn't so far. I had, um, I had some injection to change the shape. But mm-hmm. it wasn't like full feminization surgery. Um, yeah, but I think, yeah, um, it's not like, so I, I want to make clear a statement. It's not like I'm saying I'm better because I believe I'm feminine and someone who is less feminine uh, because I'm just. No, I'm, 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 I, I understand, but I get the point totally. So, okay, of course, it's not all about it. Yeah. But this is like when people ask me how, like, trend, how trans people are doing in Czechia. Yeah. I always say it depends. It depends yeah. on many factors. Yeah. And of course, the appearance, yeah. the appearance is one of the most important one. Mm-hmm. So if you if you look. Uh, if it's not obvious, if you have like yeah. passing, if it's not obvious that you're trans, then your yeah. life is basically normal. It's like just like living like everyone else. And then it, of course, depends on your social status and on your mm. family and what type of job you have and so many mm. things. Yeah. And people who are not lucky, yeah. who where you can see it, like that they are trans like immediately mm-hmm. then they have like hell on earth and it should not be yeah. like that i don't yeah, i absolutely true. don't agree it's like mm. 
pe- people should be respected no matter mm. what they look like. But it is a fact that if you look feminine, yeah. then you don't it's have easier. the troubles. It's yeah. easier. That's yeah. just that, how the society works. And it's like not your fault. It's yeah. the, like the society's fault. Yeah. And yeah, of course, it's it's the same. Like, so my experience, dating experience with a straight guys is that uh, it's very hard for, for them. Uh, it's from the conversation to accept the fact some trans women they don't want to go with some surgeries and for those guys that I talked they said like how they could be masculine in their you know they saying they are masculine and for them is they don't understand because they expect that someone will be feminine but it's their needs their Mm. um yeah their point of view. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Magda, did you opt for uh, the bottom surgery as well, or yeah, you did? I'm I'm, I'm post op. Yeah, mm-hmm. I did it in Serbia. Uh, in the end, I mean, I didn't. Uh, the, 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 <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm I'm. Again, I will say it loud. I'm I'm privileged to have an opportunity to to do it because, um, because, yeah, it's. It's expensive. Uh, not everyone um, can do it for some health reasons, but uh, I can say it loud. Uh, I've had complications and still, still uh, forcing with them. But uh, I hope, really hope, I'm on on the right track and. Uh, I met amazing people who who supported me for some period. I was, I was lost, but it was the end of July. So literally, Lenka, I think literally today or yesterday, it was six months. Mm-hmm. So it's it's quite it's it's fresh, it's fresh, it's still fresh. In your country, the surgery is not... Uh, you don't need a surgery for the legal gender recognition, right? No, no, but... Uh, and this is surprising because in our yeah. country it's still needed. Yeah. I decided not to yeah. undertake the surgery because, yeah. uh, you know, for many reasons. Yeah. And I'm fine. It's yeah. not, uh, you know, I don't... We don't live naked yeah. most of the time. It's yeah. just about the private life. Yeah which I managed to do, like arrange somehow. Yeah. And therefore I'm not legally a woman in our country. So I cannot mm. even, even Lenka is not my official name because mm. of that. But I've heard that in Poland, you have to actually sue your parents. Yeah. How did that go? That's like, whenever I tell this to someone, yeah. everyone is like, what? Yeah. And like, do your parents have to agree? Mm-hmm. Like you are, you can be like, uh, I'm like 40 yeah. and I can't imagine that I would be like coming to my parents, asking yeah. them for permission for something that I was also crazy. I was 34 and well, 34. Uh, mm-hmm. when, when, when they were, um, sued by me, uh, I, I, did you, did you inform them? Yeah, exactly. I explained them. I mean, like to my mother and my father was like neutral. Uh, so my mother realized it's important for me and it was literally the sign that I'm a woman. Um, it was documents uh, prepared by a, a lawyer from the organization, LGBT or- organization, supported me. And again, I'm privileged here because my process took six, six months. So when he, um, the lawyer sent all documents, uh, six months later, I received the right ID. It was January 2023 and legally changed it. But one thing, I'm tired as well. So uh, in Czechia, if you would like to change the ID, you have to be post-op? Yes. Well, not quite. Uh, mm-hmm. It's the sterilization, in fact, mm-hmm. that's required. Yeah. So uh, you can like uh, 
you can have your penis intact, but mm-hmm. you have your tacticals to be removed. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, vasectomy so is not enough, but yeah. you have to like remove your testicles and yeah. you then you get the ID and you can even change the name. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. have uh, another stupid law that you are not... Uh, you cannot freely change yeah. your name to whatever you want. Yeah. You can, yeah. but your name has to fit your gender. Mm-hmm. So uh, I just I chose the name Lenka, which yeah. is a strictly female name. Yeah. It's not it's not a male name, and therefore I'm not allowed to take mm-hmm. this name mm-hmm. unless I like cut my balls off. Mm. It's like that easy, and I can and I can keep my penis. It's like you really have to be sterilized. Mm-hmm. Mm castrated actually when i've talked with cheslav he told me about it and yeah i mean my body um yeah it's like um cheslav is like one of the uh, like the top uh, lgbt activist in our country he's the founder of Prague pride and now he's the director of pride business forum and he's like uh Thanks very for, very active for person. mentioning who is Czeslav. Yeah, but uh, I didn't know. He, about he has a it. Polish name, but he is. But we've talked in Polish. Uh, yeah, he speaks Polish because yeah. he comes from from a town on the borders. Yeah, and he with, studied with the, in Krakow with a with a, with a big. So. Hi, Czeslav. Hello. We hope you will listen our conversation. I, I said to him information. I'm going to Lenka, <laughs> <laughs> so he knows So you speak knows Polish everything. to Czeslav. Uh, he started, I thought like mm-hmm. our conversation will be in English and he started to talk to me in Polish and I said, okay, let's let's talk in Polish if you want. So he's feeling cool. Yeah, and I'm I'm meeting him the next week I'm going to Berlin and we mm-hmm. are going probably okay. Just laugh. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> yes. Um yeah. So uh I had to see the parents and in my case, the I call it meeting with my parents in in court. It was online, mm-hmm. so because you know, according to COVID, they changed because before it was like uh, going to the court, which was like very stressful. Of course, that experience wasn't positive at all, but online was uh, was um, much easier. And um, in my case, I was after um, sex reassignment surgery in Serbia. So immediately, I, I mean, uh, the, the translator translated the documents uh, from English to Polish. And I added to the history of my transition that... But you don't need it in Poland. It's not required. It's not required, but, you know, I was after and I think it had impact because Mm. the... Of course, again, like, you don't have to, but in my case, like, the... um, Who is the person who is doing, like, not lawyer the oh my god in 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 the court like judge judge thank you the judge immediately started to call me magda even my formal name still was mati he asked i think where is mati and the lawyer said like it's magda and uh, automatically that person of course it should be like that but again Mm -hmm. like so many people don't respect it and for example, some judges, they do not have like any experience with transgender people. So they don't know, how they, they should come to us and we will teach them how to communicate with trans people. But yeah, it's still, still very new. So in my case, it was six months that... You said that you come from a town which is the LGBT free zone. I was born there. You yeah. was born there. Do you yeah. ever go there? Like, uh, how, um, how do these, like, towns feel like? What? Mm. So, um, I'm just visiting my mother, but very occasionally. And she's living, like, two minutes from the train station. So, I do not have, like, a, a lot of contact with... What can happen there? Do they arrest you? Or, like, what no, is the... No, it's not like that. Arrest, no, no, for sure. But people will star- staring at you probably right because so what do these like lgbt free zones what do they actually mean effectively 
Uh, you know, our main party, one of person who is a leader or people who are involved in that party called like LGBT people as an ideology and it was like they tried to stop that it ideology so it was again LGBT plus ideology but as you said um, um, they finally cancelled a lot of uh, those um, cities who signed it and it was because of one of the activists who is Bart Staszewski he was going literally and the truth is that um, because of those cities or small towns will lose our money from European Union and as a country we need that money mm -hmm. so motivation for many you know cities or small villages it was like cancelled what they signed not because they believe so so yeah so like the European money yeah. has more power than the Bible let's put it that way Unfortunately, yeah, but it's, I think, the short version of, <laughs> of that. Um, um, uh, small cities, for sure, are very hard. Um, I'm next to the second city, Krakow, right? So there, there, there is okay, but still there is a lot of people who, who are... Um, like a few days ago, I had a conversation with a boat driver and he asked me what they're doing um, for living. And I said to him that I'm supporting companies to create uh, a um, diverse environment. And the person said, like, you have the same law for everyone. And I said, like, really? What about the same marriage couple? So they want to, I have a lot of gay friends and they can't, they are going to other countries like Germany, Portugal or UK to have to be married. And he said like, but everyone is equal uh, when we talk about law. How, how to talk with that person? You can't talk, mm -hmm. but we, we do have a, a lot of people who, who thinks like that, but... Um, According to your question, I know a lot of thoughts. According to your question, um, I think since few years or yeah, a few years, it started uh, good changes, not in law for LGBT plus people in Poland, but like a lot of people started to came out on Instagram, a lot of, uh, for example, on the cover of Forbes Women, the last edition uh, we do have five heroes who are lesbians so um, i see the changes are um, right now and we have to keep it and we have to still fight and i'm optimistic but we have to fight for mm -hmm. that uh, do you also have the feeling that big international companies are mm -hmm. supporting LGBT plus people very much, that they are actually mm -hmm. creating like safe spaces. Mm -hmm. this is, so it's our job, right? So um, yeah, I, I see more and more companies like people in general are interested and they realized um, that we need that uh, support and they are they have power um, and more and more allies people are um, allies so um, but again unfortunately I think the law will not change soon for like for example equal marriage or for trans people because of, of the our party uh, the main party political party um, but uh, yeah the companies are trying like giving the benefits of you know insurance for your partner doesn't matter you are you know together it's marriage or not so those kind of uh, support it, it's very important and the, the company i work for 
its name is Pure Storage. Mm -hmm. They what is the name? Sorry, Pure Storage. Mm -hmm. It's it's a it's a company from Silicon Valley, mm. and they produce uh, uh, devices for mass data storage mm -hmm. for you know SSD based uh, data storage solutions. Mm. And uh, they have like a research and development center in Prague. Mm. And they gave me like the biggest benefit of them all. Yeah. And that is that I am I can use my preferred name yeah. at the workplace. Mm. And most Czech companies would mm. just like say no. Mm. They would never ever allow me to use my name. They would say, oh, you have to have your like legal name in the email and everywhere because blah, mm. blah, blah, you know, the law and so on. Mm. So, for me, mm. this is like the, the biggest benefit that there can be, mm. that I can be myself. And it's yeah. so important to be yourself yeah. at workplace. Yeah. And uh, I'm also asking people about relationships, because mm. relationships for trans people are mm -hmm. not easy. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Mm. So, how is it with you? Mm. If you want to speak about it, you don't yeah, have to, sure. of course. Yeah, it's 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 um, it, it was important topic for me. <laughs> it was because I I started very quickly um, ex expose myself on dating apps like Tinder, and my experience was horrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you disclose yourself as? trends on yeah, Tinder, yeah, so yeah, you were yeah. you were like open about it from yeah. the profile. Yeah, I think it's it's better strategy in my opinion. Um, I have I have a well, I never had Tinder actually in my life. I met my I'm, and I'm attracted to women, and I met my girlfriend yeah. like on the street, on the street in front of the Hungarian embassy. I was speaking at the at a demonstration, and mm. she was there, and that's how we met. Mm. So I didn't have to use the Tinder, but it was I was almost like if I didn't if I wouldn't meet her, I would like create a Tinder profile in yeah. a month or so. Yeah. So I was thinking about it and I thought that the best time is like after maybe the second date. Mm. So that you don't say it about yourself on the profile, then you go to a date with the person then you maybe see if there is mm -hmm. something going on or not and if it's not you just say goodbye and you never see that person again and you don't have to like disclose to him anything mm -hmm. and if there is something going on you go to for a second date and then on the second date you can tell them the truth mm -hmm. and he either says goodbye or mm -hmm. they continue mm -hmm. that's like my opinion yeah. I, I, I don't i don't you know I'm not trying to say that this is like the ideal way, yeah. but when I was thinking about it, how I would do it on yeah. Tinder, I would do it that way. I would not yeah. like say it publicly on Tinder. Yeah. Mm, so I'm 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 attracted to to the guys. So <laughs> we have opposite uh, preferences. Mm -hmm. um, I stopped uh, dating in Poland. I don't see myself, uh, to be honest. I mean, like, for sure there there are people who are living in Poland or Polish guys who are um, who are ready for meeting transgender person. But according to my experience, I didn't want to do it again. So I started traveling to Berlin. I spent there a month in December and my experience was great. So... Um, but I changed a lot. So I see myself when I started the transition and I see myself not just physic physically uh, and uh, uh, mentally. And I know more who I'm looking for. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, that experience in Berlin, it, it was great uh, because, um, you know, I... I I was appreciated uh, by what I'm doing as a job. People were impressed how beautiful I am. Uh, we had, we, with some people that I've met, uh, we had uh, a lot in common. Um, so uh, distance, it's, it's a barrier, but 
that experience gave me a hope and uh, yeah so my experience so far is uh, i'm single <laughs> um, so people can contact uh, you can i put like the link of course, to, your, to your instagram of course. and the description of the video of course and maybe up there above yeah, the palm. Up there. <laughs> Uh, you are more than welcome to to keep in touch, and uh, I'm I'm really happy, Lenka, that we are talking. I feel like I'm I'm quite exhausted because after seven hours, and you don't want to know at which hour I have to wake up. But uh, I hope we will give a value of that conversation, and maybe we can have opportunity to continue that. To do something together we, we will see but yeah. we'll see it's certainly we'll do something together tomorrow uh, yeah. that'll be the pride business forum voices and <laughs> the, i'll be the host the and you'll be the the guest yeah we need so, a, a bit of power for for that yeah so yeah but if you have anything that you uh, a relation or any topic that you want to ask me go ahead i'm super happy uh, to. we are talking for like about an hour uh -huh, okay. so uh, <laughs> I, I will maybe have the last question yeah, sure. and that's uh, do you still have some dreams to be fulfilled or ever like mm -hmm. do you have some plans for the future or something like what you would like to do in life and you still haven't mm. so maybe i will yes. drink for it drink first it's mm. water like this is the non-alcoholic yeah i love water in in, in czechia <laughs> so in prague so i will coming for a water um i was very thirsty um, of course i do have dreams um should i tell you sure go ahead um so i think um my um the biggest dream is to fully love myself I'm, uh -huh. I'm on a process, um, I changed a lot in my life and I think it's connected with finding a partner. So when I will be fully uh, loving myself, uh, other people will... So firstly, I have to appreciate myself. And as, as I said, I think I'm on a track, I'm in a psychotherapy process and many things changed. Uh, but it's never ending story. I feel like that. So, so you feel like you are still not like accepting yourself fully? Uh, fully or? loving. Fully loving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because sometimes I have that thought like, ah, oh, you can, I don't know, do more, you know, and then you're realizing, I realize, for example, I'm working like, I don't know, 13 hours per day sometimes and some some voice inside saying more 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 so i want to yeah be more respectful for for myself and it not means you know i'm super bad for myself but still like i'm on a process still there is way to go yeah and it's a wonderful goal yeah. and i'll be holding my thumbs for you yeah. if you are Wonderful person. Thank you, Lenka. Thank you very much for coming so yeah. late. You must be exhausted, like after so many hours in train and still like doing this interview. Now you'll have to go back to the hotel and, you know, prepare. And tomorrow do. And tomorrow. And, do, I'm, uh, and I'm going to job normally. I'm just yeah. waking up in the morning. I'll go to job and then like yeah. uh, after, after work hours, I will yeah. go to like moderate yeah. the, the event. Yeah. So see you there. Thank you yeah, again. Thank, thank you, very you very much. much. I think to all my viewers that they were listening for so long again. Thank you very much. Uh, I will be doing the interviews in English more often. So uh, please subscribe. Subscribe and there. Subscribe. <laughs> yeah, subscribe like somewhere. I think, I think the logo will then eventually come somewhere here. Like maybe here. And um, take care and goodbye. Bye. Ahoy. ahoy. I can say yeah, ahoy. Yeah, you can say ahoy. Ahoy. <laughs> Cześć. 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 Dziękuję, Lenka. Thank you. Thank you.